Scoop Tales, episode 99 of Blivabob and the Louisiana Bayou. Blivabob lived in a world of his own when he was tapped in and in the zone. Such great amusement he could bring, and all without saying a thing. Sometimes he was just so unaware. It could cause others to stop in delight and stare. Chapter 1 Once upon a time, there was a young goop boy named Oblivabob. Besides being funny without even trying, Oblivabob was completely and utterly himself. He did not know what it was to put on airs or to try to impress or even to be embarrassed. Oblivabob blissfully lived in a world of his own making and in his world, the only thing that mattered was what was right in front of him. He was oblivious to everything and everyone else if they weren't in his immediate orbit. The rest of the goops were very impressed by Oblivabob's power of focus. If he was giving a presentation in Miss Wigglebutt's science class, he never got nervous or self-conscious. The spotlight didn't bother him at all because he was hardly even aware of it. He just stood up and delivered his science project with great aplomb. Now I'm going to show you how to make an erupting volcano at home. Just combine the vinegar, water, dish soap, and two drops of food coloring into the empty soda bottle. First, use a spoon to mix the baking soda slurry until it is all a liquid. Second, eruption time. Pour the baking soda slurry into the soda bottle quickly and step back and behold the magnificent eruption. The rest of the goops oohed and awed as that volcano exploded. But Oblivabob didn't even notice how impressed they were. He was too busy thinking about the volcano and how he could make it even bigger and better. Part of his charm was that he was oblivious to the opinions of others. Neither the good nor the bad swayed him. Oblivabob wore a safari-like sun hat that had flaps all around the neck. He liked it because it not only protected him from the sun, but it made him feel safe. It wasn't just the hat that made him feel safe. It was also the blanket that he carried everywhere. Oblivabob had a very soft blanket that was navy blue with glow-in-the-dark stars. With his safari sun-blocking hat and his glow-in-the-dark blanket in tow, Oblivabob felt secure enough to take on any adventure. The rest of the goops found this whole getup very entertaining. Tiza loved to tease him about his flapping sun hat and how ridiculous it looked. But he was completely oblivious to her teasing, which only aggravated her and made her want to tease him more. No matter how much she teased, he remained blissfully oblivious. Oblivabob was great friends with the twins Breaka and Smashem, who loved to break and smash things. They enjoyed hanging out with Oblivabob because he never seemed to notice just how many things they smashed and broke and they knew he wouldn't tattletale on them, like Sir Ratsalot. One very chilly fall day, Oblivabob popped out of bed, put on a warm beanie cap, and then put on his flapping sun hat over the beanie. He grabbed his navy starry blanket and set off to a rock quarry. 
where he promised to meet Breka and smash him. They loved the rock quarry because they could throw rocks, break things, and wreak as much havoc as they wanted. And no one told them not to. Most of the other goops didn't want to go to the rock quarry because they had been warned about how dangerous it could be with huge machinery moving giant rocks around. Oblivabob was, of course, oblivious to any danger, so he happily went along. He walked along a path covered with thousands of white rock pieces. His feet crunched over the rocks as he thought about what fun he would have with Breka and Smasham. Oblivabob, wait up, it's us! called out a little voice as a rock sailed through the air and landed a few feet in front of Oblivabob. Lifting the flap of his hat, Oblivabob turned around and saw Breka and Smasham headed towards him, throwing rocks along the way. The three of them met up and headed into the quarry. Once they were there, Smasham looked around and said, It looks like they did some work here yesterday. We have to be extra careful. There's just a lot of stuff lying around. Okay, no problem, said Breka, who picked up a rock and threw it deep into the quarry. They all watched as the rock dropped into the quarry and split into a million tiny pieces. Soon, they were all throwing rocks into the quarry, competing to see who could throw the biggest rock. Oblivabob spotted a large forklift nearby, holding an enormous chunk of rock. The rock was lifted partially in the air, and Oblivabob walked over to it and touched the side of it. It was smooth and cold. Look, he called out to the twins, as he stood beneath the rock and pretended to be holding it up. Breka and Smasham turned to see him standing beneath the enormous stone rock, balancing on the forklift. Together, they called out, No! But it was too late. The rock lowered right down on a blibobob, and he was gone. Chapter 2. The force was smothering. Oblivabob felt the enormous rock crush him down. And strangely enough, he felt himself folding up like a cardboard box. He lay there flat as could be in the darkness. Being a bit scared and not knowing what else to do, he just waited and waited until finally the darkness began to fade away and light came in. On seeing the light, Oblivabob popped up and unfolded himself. He straightened out his hat and looked around. Oblivabob was in a world unlike anything he had ever seen. He gazed out over a body of water with huge cypress trees held up by enormous trunks that spread out like mushrooms. The cypresses were popping out of the water like islands. Their large branches draped down and touched the water like dangling brooms sweeping the surface. As he observed the cypresses, Oblivabob sensed something. This place was eerily beautiful and full of great mystery, but also great danger. He could just feel it. He clutched his starry blanket and took in a deep breath. (sighs) He decided to explore. Walking along the banks of the water, Oblivabob stopped and picked up stones, throwing them in. 
remembering the quarry with Breka and Smasham. This place was so different, and he was alone. As he walked along, he was distracted by a ripple in the water. He stared at it, waiting for something to happen, but nothing did. As Oblivabob continued to explore, he was aware of a ripple moving along the water and then disappearing. He got the distinct feeling that he was being followed, but every time he stopped and looked around, there was nothing, no one. Oblivabob adjusted his hat and clutched his blanket and kept on going. Finally, he sat down on the water's edge and just stared. He didn't move a muscle. If someone was following him, he was going to find them. He was so still and silent, he hardly moved for an entire hour. And then, just when he was about to stand up and carry on, he saw it. It was the ripple again. Only this time, he saw something beneath it. The ripple was across the water near a large cypress tree. Oblivabob watched as what looked like a long, brown, bumpy log surfaced on the water. It bobbed up and down. Oblivabob stood up and put his hand over his eyes, leaning forward to get a better view. It's just a law, he said to himself as he breathed a sigh of relief. <sighs> he watched as the log floated along the water and then slowly moved deeper into the swampy area and disappeared. That was the strangest thing I've ever seen, thought Oblivabob. He couldn't shake the feeling that something was awry. You are right to be suspicious, said a voice behind him. Oblivabob whipped around and so did his ear flaps. Up here, said a voice, as if it had said up here a million times before. Oblivabob looked up and saw a magnificent white egret with a golden beak looking down at him. She shook her head back and forth as if to say, you should know better. Instead, she said, welcome to the bayou where alligators masquerade as logs. Be warned. Oblivabob felt his head spinning as he scrambled to put together what the egret had just said. He repeated back to her, the, the bayou where alligators masquerade as logs? Indeed, that is what I said, replied the egret. Forgetting about the alligators for a moment, Oblivabob asked, is this a Louisiana bayou? It is, said the egret. Oblivabob broke into a huge smile. He had always wanted to visit a bayou, and now here he was. He thought about his next presentation in Miss Wigglebutt's class and how he could talk about the bayou. He would talk all about the cypress trees with huge trunks that look like giant mushrooms. He was lost in thought when the egret interrupted him. You can't zone out in the bayou. There's a log behind you. Chapter 3 Oblivabob instantly stiffened and stared at the egret. He didn't want to turn around. He wanted to remain oblivious to any danger that was lurking behind him. The egret stared back at Oblivabob and shook her head. Then, without warning, 
she flew up and over Oblivabob and was out of sight. Now he could hardly stand it. He needed to do something. Slowly, lifting the ear flap on his hat, Oblivabob began to turn his head. When he had finally turned around, he was astonished to see the egret standing on top of the bumpy log that was beginning to look like an alligator. Oblivabob watched as the jaws of the alligator opened wide. The egret reached down with her beak and pecked at his back as if to say, knock it off and the alligator snapped his jaws shut, rolled his eyes up in his head, sunk a little into the water, and slowly began to float away, looking like a log. The egret shook her head and flew from the alligator's back over to the shore. She perched herself on the ground right in front of Oblivabob and looked him directly in the eyes. I'm Goldie. That was Chomp, said the egret, as she pointed her golden beak towards the log that was floating away. We have a relationship. It's very symbiotic. Make no mistake, you will not have that kind of relationship with Chomp or any of the alligators in the bayou. Do you understand me? Oblivabob lifted up his hands and adjusted his hat. That was what he did when he was nervous. He didn't say a word. Goldie spoke again. I said, do you understand me? Asked Goldie again. Ah, oh, said Oblivabob as he tried to form words, but couldn't. Okay, okay. This is not going to be easy. I don't want to see Chomp chomp on you. But I can't help you if you won't help yourself. You need to pay attention, she said as she stared at him. Oblivabob thought of all the times that he was called oblivious. And then he thought about how he was really just so focused on one thing that everything else faded away. He knew he could pay attention and focus if he wanted to. He took in a deep breath, stood up straighter, and looked Goldie in the eye. I am paying attention. Tell me exactly what I need to know. I can focus, he said. Goldie was impressed with this change in behavior. And now she felt compelled to help Oblivabob. Tell me your name, she said. Oblivabob. I see, sighed Goldie with a little chuckle. Well, Oblivabob, as I mentioned, you are in a Louisiana bite. And unless you know your way around a bite, it is not a place you want to be in for long. Do you know your way around the bayou? She asked. Uh, no, said Oblivabob. Just as I thought. No worries. I can get you out of here and away from Chomp and his friends. But you need to listen and focus. No zoning out. Got that? Said Goldie. Got it, responded Oblivabob. Good. Now you see those trees over there? Goldie said as she pointed towards a group of cypress trees sprouting from the water. Oblivabob nodded. Most of those trees are over 500 years old. They know everything about the bayou. They see everything, including Chomp and his friends. You need to make friends with the cypress trees, and they will guide you out of the bayou and back to where you came from. There are maps hidden in their roots, said Goldie. Oblivabob looked over towards the cypress trees and he saw a ripple in the water and then something brown that looked like a log 
bob up and down near the surface. He looked back at Goldie. Those trees are majestic and mysterious. I can feel their energy and I have so much respect for them. How do I show them that? How do I befriend them? How do I find the maps hidden in their roots? He asked. You swim over to them, said Goldie. Oblivabob turned and looked at the cypress trees again. He saw the brown log bobbing up and down in the water right in front of them. Chapter 4 Swim over there? He asked with a lump in his throat. You're clever. You'll figure it out. Now go on, said Goldie. Oblivabob looked back at the trees. The brown log was no longer in view. Now was his moment. Oblivabob was a strong swimmer, so he wasn't worried about that. The only thing he was concerned about was the brown log but it was no longer there. Oblivabob made the wise decision to focus on the trees. He put his feet into the water, adjusted his hat, and began to swim towards the closest cypress tree. Halfway across the water, he stopped for a moment and looked around. Nothing. But then, just as he was about to start swimming again, he saw it, a small ripple in the distance, a ripple that seemed to be coming towards him. He immediately began swimming as quickly as he could toward the tree, and then he felt it. Something was touching him, nudging him from behind. Oblivabob couldn't look. He just couldn't. If he was going to be swallowed by the open jaws of an alligator, he didn't want to watch. So instead, he stared straight ahead. But he found himself staring right into the open jaws of Chomp, who was only two feet in front of him. Before he could do anything, he felt the nudge from behind him grow more forceful. And then he was lifted up and out of the water and right over Chomp. The long graceful branch of the cypress tree was carrying him. Oblivabob was cradled by the sweeping branch as he glided above Chomp, who snapped his mouth shut in dismay. The branch moved all the way over to the huge base of the cypress tree and deposited a Oblivabob. He stood up and got his bearings. Oblivabob was now standing on the base of a cypress tree in the middle of a bayou completely surrounded by water. Chomp was lurking beneath the water, very close by. Oblivabob sat down and felt the trunk of the cypress tree. It was heated from sitting in the sun all day and felt warm and welcoming. Rubbing the tree trunk had a calming effect and soon Oblivabob could feel his senses sharpening. Everything seemed brighter and clearer and he could hear every noise in the bayou. As he rubbed the tree trunk, he began to feel a strange pattern. Looking down, Oblivabob saw that there were carvings in the trunk of the tree, carvings that showed the layout of the bayou that seemed to go on and on. There were secret inlets and paths and waterways 
all mapped out. It also showed an inlet filled with alligators, some on the shore, some in the water. Oblivabob stared down at the map of the bayou carved in the tree trunk. He was in awe. This was exactly as Goldie had described. Now he had to figure out how to navigate the bayou using the guidance from the map. Oblivabob went into focus mode and stared down at the carving again. He ignored the ripples in the water around him. He was singularly focused on the carvings, and he noticed a long, bending branch dripping with moss. That's it, said Oblivabob. He worked his way around the trunk to the other side of the cypress, where he spotted the bending branch dripping with moss. Oblivabob climbed up the branch and sat on it as if he were sitting on a swing. Then he said, Mysterious and majestic tree, please take me to the next step. The branch slowly began to rock back and forth and move out over the water, carrying a Oblivabob. Gliding over ripples, the branch held on to a Oblivabob until it swayed over to another large cypress trunk and released him. A Oblivabob did the same thing at the next tree. He looked around for a carving and found it. On the carving, he immediately looked for the location of a long winding branch. And then he went to the branch and waited to be transported. Every branch picked him up gently and moved him to the next tree. He was even carried over the inlet where Chomp and his friends lived. They looked up at Oblivabob flying above them and they all opened their enormous jaws and waited. But Oblivabob didn't fall. He just stared down at the alligators and waved. Finally, he came to a cypress tree that was big and large and just like the rest, but the carving was different. There was no long swaying branch on this map. Oblivabob studied the carving over and over, but still he couldn't locate a long swaying branch. He didn't know what to do, so he went into a focus zone and blocked out everything else. And then he saw it. At the base of the tree, where the trunk met the water, there was an entry that went beneath the tree and extended into a long tunnel. The entry was marked by a large twisted root from the cypress tree that led into the water. Oblivabob searched the base of the tree until he found the twisted root. This was it. He put his arm down into the water beneath the root and felt a hollow opening. He knew what he had to do. So before he had time to even think about chomp and get scared, Oblivabob hopped down off the tree trunk into the water and went into the entry. Once inside the bottom of the tree, it was very dark. Oblivabob knew he was in the tunnel that he saw on the map and that it only went forward. So forward he went, step after step, he moved along in the dark. When he felt like he couldn't take another step, he saw a glimmer of light in front of him. Oblivabob stopped walking and started running. He ran and ran until the light became brighter and brighter. And finally, he found himself outside in full sunlight, standing on a giant rock, looking down at the rock quarry. I did it, 
he thought to himself. He set off to go tell Breka and Smasham all about his adventures in the bayou, but they were nowhere to be found. They were in Egypt, being chased by the spirit of a mummy named Cleopatra. But that is a tale for another time. Hey there, it's Maria. Thanks for listening to Goop Tales. If you want to listen to another one, all you have to do is click on your screen and you can. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to Goop Tales and you'll always be notified when there's a new one. You can tag us on social media at Goop Tales on either Facebook or Instagram. I'd love to hear your questions and comments. And you can also leave me a voicemail if you go to gooptales.com and use the little prompt in the sidebar. Okay, I will see you in the next Gooptail.